God is truly risen, alleluia. To him be glory and power for all the ages of eternity, alleluia, alleluia. We join the following who offer this mass in a special way. Joel, Adomai, and family offer this mass for the repose of the soul of Christine Tideru on our 20th death anniversary. May the Almighty God continue to grant her eternal rest. Brenda Nagawa prays for the soul of her late Aunt Christine Narukwago, that the Almighty God may forgive her as all her sins and grant her eternal rest. Brenda still prays for the souls in purgatory that the merciful hand of God may grant them eternal rest. Kembaba's anity prays for the father's soul in purgatory that his soul may rest in eternal peace. Mirembe, Margaret, and family, they pray for the repose and eternal rest of the following members. Kisacha Maria, Christina Aten, Benedicto Chikundu, Amoit, Beatrice Namudu, Gerard Chitiwa, Asimwe Proskovia, Deo Gracias Businge, Pasco, George, and all the souls of the other family members, the Lord may have mercy upon them and grant them eternal rest. We are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lord be with A very happy Easter to all of you. We grant, as we gather this morning to celebrate the center and the foundation of our Christian faith, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus, we recognize that we are still weak. For many times, we have not acted like a people of resurrection. Let us ask God his mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask blessed Mary of what all the angels and saints and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O oh God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The first reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. We have eaten and drunk with him after his resurrection. Peter addressed Cornelius and his household. You must have heard about the recent happenings in Judea, about Jesus of Nazareth and how he began in Galilee after John had been preaching baptism. God had anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, and because God was with him, Jesus went about doing good and curing all who had fallen into the power of the devil. Now I and those with me can witness to everything he did throughout the countryside of Judea and in Jerusalem itself, and also to the fact that they killed him by hanging him on a tree. Yet three days afterwards, God raised him to life and allowed him to be seen, not by the whole people, but only certain witnesses God had chosen beforehand. Now we are those witnesses. We have eaten and drunk with him after his resurrection from the dead. And he has ordered us to proclaim this to his people and to tell them that God has appointed him to judge everyone, alive or dead. It is to him that all the prophets bear this witness, that all who believe in Jesus will have their sins forgiven through his name. This is the word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm and our response shall be Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his love has no end. Let the sons of Israel say, His love has no end. The Lord's right hand has triumphed. His right hand raised me up. I shall not die. I shall live and recount his deeds. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. The second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Since you have been brought back to true life with Christ, you must look for the things that are in heaven where Christ is sitting at God's right hand. Let your thoughts be on heavenly things, not on the things that are on earth, because you have died and now the life you have is hidden with Christ in God. 
when Christ is revealed and he is in your life, you too will be revealed in all your glory with him. This is the word of the Lord. Brethren, may we rise up for the sequence. Christians, to the patch of victim, offer sacrifice and praise. The sheep are ransomed by the lamb, and Christ the undefiled hath seen us to his father reconciled. Death with life contented combats strongly ended. Life's own champion slain, yet lives to reign. Tell us, Mary, say what thou didst see upon the way. The tomb the living did enclose. I saw Christ's glory as he rose. The angels there attesting, shroud with grave clothes resting. Christ, my hope, has risen. He goes before you into Galilee. That Christ is truly risen from the dead we know. Victorious King, thy mercy show. Brethren, may we now welcome the gospel. Must rise from the dead. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. It was very early on the first day of the week and still dark when Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been moved away from the tomb and came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. 
They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, she said, and we do not know where they have put him. So Peter set out with the other disciple to go to the tomb. They ran together, but the other disciple, running faster than Peter, reached the tomb first. He bent down and saw the linen cloth lying on the ground, but did not go in. Simon Peter, who was following now, came up, went right into the tomb, saw the linen cloth on the ground, and also the cloth that had been over his head. This was not with the linen, linen cloth, but rolled up in a press by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in. He saw and he believed. Till this moment, they had failed to understand the teaching of scripture that he must rise from the dead. Brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. This is the day, this is the day of the Lord has made, Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day. The Lord is good, and all the time, the Lord is good, and that's nature. It is a joyous day, the day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Happy Easter to all of you. Thank you. We have been fasting imitating and coming closer to our Lord through prayer, fasting and almsgiving during the 40 days. They are now over, and I'm sure we are all resurrecting with Jesus Christ. We are all coming back to life. We are all being renewed if we have used those 40 days well. We are told as a sign that Jesus was no longer under the tomb, the stone was rolled away. The stone was removed. Meaning, Jesus could not be kept under the tomb, he came out of it. Have we come out of our tombs? Oh, we are singing hallelujah, hallelujah, still under the cave. The Lord is good. Ask the neighbor, is the stone removed? <laughs> the stone of hatred, the stone of self-centeredness, the stone of jealous, the stone of fear, the stone of talking and speaking heal against the other, the stone of doubt. I don't know what other type of stones we can name. The stone of unfaithfulness in marriage. Is the stone removed? Yes. Amen. We glorify God if the stones are removed. <laughs> if they are still there, don't hesitate to ask him. The one who was able to overcome, he can still assist you. He can still empower you, fill you with his power and grace to remove those stones that may still be there, keeping us, keeping us away separating us from God and from one another. The Lord is risen. That's the message of Easter. That our God is alive. It reminds me of a friend 
who was of a certain faith, he made a pilgrimage to Mecca. When he returned, he made a very big party, normally to, to be welcomed back, receiving a new title, and so on. Among the friends invited to welcome him back was also a priest who was his friend. This friend was so excited after that trip, reaching Kaaba and so on. He told the priest, I'm so happy that I have gone to the center of our faith, to the origin. I had even a chance to touch the tomb of Muhammad and he was there and I was filled with joy. And with pity, he turned to the priest and said, I pity you, my friend. For you, when you go to the Holy Land, to Israel, they take you around and take you to an empty tomb. Empty. And the man is not there. But ours, I touched and is there. And the priest said, yes, that is the difference. You are true to touch yours because he's dead and still in the tomb. Ours is alive and is not in the tomb, therefore we cannot look for him among the dead. Jesus is alive. <laughs> He's alive and is journeying with us. Easter is a moment of hope, new hope, that life is not ending with the death and the darkness. Life is not ending with Good Friday. We may be going some moments of Good Fridays, some moments of doubt, some moments of pain, disappointment here and there, but there is hope. God is the one with the last word. The one who never left Jesus to rot under the dead, to remain in the tomb forever, will set you free will have the last word on your life. Don't lose hope. Don't be discouraged. That's the message of Easter. Have hope in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Who journeys with us in the Eucharist, in other sacraments, in his word, in our congregation as we have gathered here. We were one who said, where are two or three are gathered in my name, I'm there in your midst, is even here with us. Others want to clap as a shy clap if you feel like. <laughs> He's alive. Don't be ashamed. Peter is testifying to this truth in the first reading. He says, Now we are those witnesses. We have eaten and drunk with him after his resurrection from the dead. And he has ordered us to proclaim this to his people and to tell them that God has appointed him to judge everyone alive or dead. Peter and others testify that after his resurrection, they drank, they ate with him. This means that resurrection is not a fantasy, but is a reality. And Jesus himself confirms it in Luke 24, 39. Look at my hands and my feet. I'm not a ghost, I'm alive. So Peter, to testify that they ate and drank with him after the resurrection, means that they were in communion with him, communion with Jesus. They were journeying with him. And Jesus wants us also to be witnesses of his resurrection. That is alive, is with us. He journeys with us in our day-to-day -day lives. Witnesses by the way we live. When we live with courage and hope, we are testifying that we are not alone. Yes, I may be undergoing some challenges, but the one who overcame death and sin is with me. Hope in Jesus who journeys with us. Peter ate and drink, drank with him. May we experience the risen Lord 
in our day-to-day -day lives. What are we supposed to do after Lent? Are we going back to the normal? As it was before, and wait another Lent to come closer, to be better, to strengthen our relationship with God and with one another? Wherever I pose this question to myself, it reminds me during the recorrection of the late Father Bill, one time he said in his country, India, very early in the morning, he was going for mass. And he reached the traffic lights. The traffic light was showing red. But there were no vehicles on the road. He says he was the only one. He reduced a bit. Looked left, right, nobody's coming. He continued. After moving a bit, the traffic police followed him and stopped him. They asked him what he had done when he reached the traffic lights. He said, I reduced a bit, and after looking left and right, I put off. They asked him, what does red mean? Does it mean reduce or stop? Said it means stop. Why have you not stopped but just reduced? The Lord is good. Lent was not a moment just to train us to reduce, but to stop. We have been making efforts here and there. But after Lent, some may just have reduced a bit and now they are going to take off at a terrible speed. <laughs> Tell the neighbor that Lent was not for reducing but to stop. What are we stopping? What are we leaving behind? All that that affects our relationship with one another and with God. We are called to leave all those that may appear like stones which keep us under the tombs to leave them behind. It was not a moment only for Lent, but for life. Lent was only training us, strengthening us, giving us an extra effort and a, a stronger gear to move in the life of holiness. That's what the second message, second reading was telling us. That since you have been brought back to true life with Christ, you must look for the things that are in heaven. You have brought back. Don't return. Look ahead. Look ahead where Christ is sitting at God's right hand that we may be interested more and more to come closer to God to amend our broken relationship with him and with one another. No return. But we are called just to go ahead in the good life, in the good way that we have developed during the renting season. May we imitate the example of Mary Magdalene in the Gospel. We are told that very early in the morning, when it was even still dark, she moved without fear to the tomb. She still longed for her friend. She already acted as a person of resurrection. She put aside fear with courage. A lady at that time, she moved to the tomb. May we have also that courage to come out of our safe zones, risk our lives, forego our comfort for the good of the other. She left her bed and went to check on Jesus. And Jesus rewarded her and made her to become the apostle of the apostles. The first to see him resurrected. The first to see him alive. 
and gave her the chance even to tell the apostles that Jesus is alive. It is through taking courage, taking risks, that we can encounter the risen Lord. Without having that risk, putting fear aside, putting aside what others have to say, we may not encounter the risen Lord. But we have to take the opposite direction. To, to act like a time with mad people in order to meet him. Put aside what others have to say about you. Why are you always for prayers? Why are you so and so? Why do you trust in the Lord? If we can overcome all those tendencies at the human level, then we can encounter the risen Lord. May this Easter renew our faith. May it renew our hope in the Lord. May it renew us spiritually. May it make us more loving, more strong in our faith, more charitable, and more always uh, trusting in the mercy and the love of the Lord. May the risen Lord bless you all. May we now stand up and profess our faith. I believe in one God. Of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made. Through him all things are made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake was crucified, and upon us Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism, and I look forward and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, this is the day the Lord has made. When Jesus Christ rose from the dead, let us turn to God our Father in prayer to ask him through our risen Lord to give us all the graces necessary to be witnesses to the power of the resurrection. After each prayer intention, when I say, hear us, O Lord, our response shall be, let your light shine upon us. Let your light shine upon us. For the church, the body of Christ. May she preach Christ's resurrection as her own triumph over sin and death and the world, and thus proclaim the victory by which Jesus is Lord, to the glory of the Father. Hear us, O Lord. For the leaders of our government, may they bring the hope of the resurrection to all the people of this land and seek peace and harmony in, in industry 
and in all areas of public life. Hear us, O Lord. For the underprivileged and those in distress. May their sorrow be turned into joy, and may all Christians, through the power of the resurrection, give them renewed hope for the future. Hear us, O Lord. For the sick and the dying, may they see their suffering May they see that their suffering is an invitation by Christ himself to share in his glory. Hear us, O Lord. We make our prayer. We make our prayer with Mary in our Easter joy as we say, Hail Mary. We pray in silence for our own intentions in and through the power of the risen Lord. Father, hear the prayers we offer with all our hearts so that the message of Easter may be with us always, through Christ our Lord.
my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God Almighty Father. Look, O Lord, we pray on the surpassing charity in the heart of your beloved Son, that what we offer may be a gift acceptable to you and an expiation of our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just a ditch and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, in this time above all, to allow you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. And so, overcome with the Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. As he celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the charge of salvation, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring out the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and poor Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially those we have prayed for in this Mass, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mass on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, blessed apostles, Saint Anerico Bon, Uganda martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, our love be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and the gracious grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. the Lamb of God, God him takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. But only say what? May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
us pray. Look upon your church, O oh God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank the St. Paul Choir that has animated us in this Mass. Thank you. Thank you very much. And for all of you, thank you for coming and for your participation. We continue to wish you a happy Easter. The Lord is good. And all the time. Please join me thank our dear parish priest, Reverend Father James Patrick, for celebrating Easter with us. Today, the 31st March 2024, Easter Sunday, year B, these are our announcements. We begin with the marriage bands. Julius Endonga of Bueregere and Helen Anyao of Bueregere. Conrad Mugabo of Chira Mulawa and Annette Namara of Chira Mulawa. Edward Sekaja of Nakuade and Catherine Namatovu of Nakuade. Alex Tumukonde of Casero Buloba and Vastina Tumhimbise of Casero Buloba. Bonnie Kainga of Mutungo and Mariam Yvonne Nabosa of Mutungo. Jackson Katende of Nama Mokono and Bena Nasali of Nama Mokono. Happy Easter to you all. Today is Easter Sunday. We celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Tomorrow will be Easter Monday. We shall have mass at 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. with infant baptisms. Baptism instructions for infants for the month of April will be next Sunday, the 6th and also 13th April 2024 at 3 p.m. And baptism will be on the 14th April 2024. Parents and godparents interested in baptizing their children in the month of April are informed to attend. We continue to thank all those who brought items for the needy in our community during the Lenten season. May the Almighty bless you. The parish executive will meet next Sunday, 7th April 2024, and the parish pastoral council will meet on 14th April 2024. All the meetings will be after the 9 a.m. mass in the kindergarten hall. The marriage class for couples wedding in the month of June and July 2024 starts next Sunday, 7th April 2024, immediately after the 9 a.m. Mass. These classes are obligatory. As a parish community, we recite the rosary online via Zoom every Monday starting at 8 p.m. The link and login details for joining can be found on the parish WhatsApp or Facebook pages. We encourage, we encourage you all to join this prayer moment virtually and, and we pray as one big family. The marriage and family ministry announces an upcoming seminar on parenting and family challenges, which is slated on, a, on 28th April 2024 at Our Lady of Africa Kindergarten Hall after the 9 a.m. Mass. There will also be free eye care services. All couples at, at attend in person. All couples are, are requested to make a humble contribution 
of only 30,000 Uganda shillings to cover expenses of the day. Mbuya Parish Youth Apostolate has organized a mini English Premier League football gala for Arsenal and Manu, Man City, Liverpool, Chelsea fans on Sunday, 21st April 2024, immediately after the 9 a.m. mass at St. Kizito Primary School football grounds. All fans should come for mass in, in their jerseys. Each club will contribute 200,000, and the winner will take a huge goat. This is to support the Youth Day celebrations in May 2024. Those who have already taken Easter envelopes are kindly requested to return them, and those who have not yet taken any to kindly pick one from the sacristy or the parish office. Envelopes for tithe and for contributions towards parish construction projects are available. Kindly pick one from our altar servers outside the church. We have started the construction works for the Adoration Chapel. We shall access the church through the stairs behind the cross as well as through the behind entrance next to the Komboni House. We apologize for any inconveniences caused during this period of works. Contributions towards supporting construction of the Adoration Chapel are welcome. We thank you all for always praying with us at Our Lady of Africa Church, Mbuya, both physically and virtually from within and outside Uganda. Through our YouTube channel, and for the updates of our parish programs, visit our social media platforms. Today, we shall have a second collection for Caritas activities internationally. Thank you for your usual support in advance. We wish you a joyful Easter Sunday. Thank you.
glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, for all without end. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass ascended. Alleluia. Alleluia.